I praise and thank God for this beautiful morning that God has given in each one of our lives. For today's morning meditation, let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the word, Lord Jesus. Father, yes, Lord, on the right time, right day, you died on the cross, Lord Jesus, for our sins. Help us to understand this verse in depth. Holy Spirit, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, Paul writes that Christ died at the right time. But what can it possibly mean that Christ died at the right time? As it says in Galatians chapter 4, 4, but when the time had come fully, had fully come, God sent his son. God is not slow in his dealings as some count slowness. Right? In his Pentecostal, Paul preaches that Jesus was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. The birth of Christ in Bethlehem was not a simple twist of fate or chance occurrence. It was not accidental how Jesus died on Calvary's cross that Passover weekend. That first Lord's day when Jesus rose from the death was not some trick of history which caught an almighty and glorious God by surprise. No, Christ died on the right time. In the Old Testament, we can see how the history of salvation led us to a climax. It was at the right moment in this history that Jesus Christ went about Galilee and Judea proclaiming the gospel. His entry into Jerusalem on that Sunday morning when they hailed him as king, the son of David, was phone ordained by God. And it was necessary that he should die less than a week later. He died then. But this was the time appointed by God. His father was in control of things. Amen. But there is something else about the timeliness of God's death. He died while we were still powerless. We are powerless. So powerless that we cannot lift ourselves up to attain the glory of which we fall short. Our relationship with God was broken because of sin. We had separated ourselves from Him. Because of a sin, we were unable to please Him. Because of a sin, we were unable to console ourselves to Him. We had trapped ourselves in our ungodliness. Paul says, however, that Christ died for the ungodly. In this way, God showed his love for us. There is something very striking in verse 8. Note how does not say God has demonstrated his own love for us. This is not simply something of the past. He demonstrates his own love now in the present day. In this we have hope. In this we have confidence. We know our hope will not disappoint us. Our Heavenly Father will never have to say to us, I am sorry my children, but things did not quite work out like I had planned. No. We have a shown knowledge and firm confidence that we will share the glory of God. But even now He shows His love to us. For Christ has died for sinners. Sinners like you and me, my friend. Christ died. 
Jesus Christ's death for us while we were powerless and ungodly forms that God loves us. He seals his love, seals it with the blood of his son. <clears throat> there are two things we can understand in this verse. A unique death and an atoning death. A unique death, the death of Christ was one of a kind. Verse seven reads, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possible daily dare to die. What is Paul saying? Who is this righteous man? Who is the good man? What do they have to do with our hope? Here Paul is showing us the unique character of Christ's death. If you see, there are few people who will stand in the breach for others. Paul is proposing for the sake of discussion that there is a righteous man. Paul refers here not to someone who is righteous before God. He means instead a person righteous in the eyes of man and of the law. He uses the word righteous in its ordinary sense. He speaks of the righteous man as a citizen of the community. This is a man who obeys the law of the land. He does what is right and goes about his business and integrity and honor. He does what society asks from him and offends no one. For such a person, even though he is honorable and commendable, few men will offer to die. Paul suggests whoever that for a good man, perhaps someone even dares to die. The good man is different from a righteous man, my friends. In the eyes of men, there are many righteous people. You meet these people in all the walks of life. They need not to be believers. This type of man does what he owed and gives to everyone his due. The good man is more, however, because he does more than society requires of him. This good man is one who does not just give everyone his due. Rather, he actively promotes the well-being of his neighbors. A righteous man is innocent of wrongdoing, but the good man is worthy of praise for his pity. The good man, his actions are excellent, honorable, even praiseworthy. For such a man, someone might even be willing to die. Such a person could become the object of a love so strong that a friend might even lay his own life to save him. We see so many scenarios of friendship where one friend sacrifices for other. However, we were none of these things. We were not good. We ourselves we el- eliminated ourselves from God. We were strangers to doing good. We could not keep the law. We fell short of the glory of God. We by nature hate God and our neighbors. We have plunged ourselves into the deepest depth of sin and we are incapable of doing any good. We are not the good men Paul speaks of. We are not even remotely righteous. Yet while we were powerless, while we were ungodly, Christ died for us, my friend. In this we see the amazing grace of God. Christ's death is for you and me as a sinner. God did not come seeking a righteous person. He did not come seeking a good person. He came seeking the lost. Amen. And second thing, an atoning death. The foundation of our hope is in God's own love, my friend. For God shows his own love for us in Christ's atoning death. Our hope will not disappoint us for Christ died in our place. We have not founded our hope in our own goodness. We have not founded it on our ability to be righteous in ourselves. Nor have we founded it in our ability to choose for God. Our hope is not based on our love for God. 
we base our hope on God's own love for us. Jesus Christ died in our place because God demands that his justice be satisfied. And in his death, full payment was made. We were unable to make full payment for we daily increase our death. Depth of sin. Further, no very creature can sustain the burden of God's wrath against sin. Christ Jesus' death is atonement for our sins. He came to pay a ransom for many. He came to lay his life down for his friends. He died for those who were alienated from the Father. In him we will once again have a share of the glory of God. This is our hope which will not disappoint. Our hope is sure. It cannot fail. It will not bring shame, my friends. Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice which restores us to the Father. No one can take that from us, for none can snatch us out of his hands. Christ ransomed us from the bondage of sin and set us free in the newness of life. Good morning, my friends. We rejoice in our hope. We can even rejoice in the su- sufferings of the present age. But we know that sufferings produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. This hope does not disappoint. We must base our hope on God's own love for us. Paul writes to Timothy and also to us. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Amen. This is the gospel message. He came to save sinners like you and me. And save us, he did, by his timely, his unique and his atoning death. Amen. Let's remember his sacrifice for our sins, my friends. Let us be comforted in our own lives when we desire his works and it seems that he has delayed or is long overdue. In God's economy, he will act at the right time, the best time for us. We are saved because he did everything on time. Let's submit our lives to him and let's glorify his name in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this morning. Jesus, Father, we praise your name for we were weak in the pit of despair. You send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, at the right time to be our strength and our life. We submit our lives in your mighty hands, Lord. Your name should be glorified through each one of our lives. Help us to prepare ourselves. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. May God bless you, my brothers and sisters. A Jesus coming very soon. Maranatha.